So trading has been good. So we were on a streak of 14 trading days with no losses. And I still remember yesterday, you know, Dr. B was trading in and he was saying, man, it's 14 days. We were just crushing it. And I, I felt this shudder through my system. I'm like, he didn't just say that. And then yesterday afternoon, we had a losing trade. And today I had two, I had two winners, but one loser. So we kind of, you know, you don't, I'm not super superstitious like that, but yeah. at the same time, the market never lets you get too cocky or too full of yourself. It makes you remember who's boss. Yeah. And it's just inevitably a loss is coming. So yeah, it was a great week, great month, in fact. But we finally had a loss in the trading room here over it the last happens. couple of days. It does. Wait a minute, everyone. Welcome to Bitcoin Zella, your platform for daily cryptocurrency analysis and news. Our mission is to keep it simple. Bitcoin Zella offers engaging information that is easy to understand. Our analysts keep their eyes on the latest news to provide valuable insights via email. Don't miss out on this opportunity. Join our community of 10,000 subscribers and experience the new edge with Bitcoin Zella. Subscribe now. In this video, Gareth will share his insights on Will Bitcoin hold its line or are we on the brink of another leg down? Let's join Gareth in this interview about these topics and more. Should probably talk about Bitcoin, should we? Sure. All right. Absolutely. So Bitcoin yesterday, amazing bounce, right? We had we had the the fall the previous day and, and we went down basically to right in this zone right here, right? We could see the support line and then we had this huge bounce. The negative for Bitcoin today is that the stock market is up. It might not be up a lot, but if the stock market is up, Bitcoin's giving back half of its gains from yesterday. So that to me is a little bit of a disconnect with what you would assume would happen. If the stock market was up, I would think, okay, well, at least Bitcoin should be up a little bit, right? And it's not. So it usually follows somewhat. It's risk. It's a risk on trade, mm -hmm. right? So, so again, that does catch my eye that it's pulling back. As a technician, you really only care about this line now, right? So if we break here, that's where you get your next leg down to this zone right down here. You have this sideways, all these trend lines kind of right in this area would be your zone. Now, if it can hold this, at some point you need to see it reattack 69,000 and change and get back above okay. there. But right now, again, not the greatest price action today on Bitcoin. Um, so we'll have to see again where it goes. Nope. BlackRock's customers are mainly interested in Bitcoin, with Ethereum coming next. The Esher's Bitcoin Trust, IBIT, BlackRock's Bitcoin ETF, has gathered about 243,000 Bitcoins since it started. U.S. presidential candidate Robert F. Kennedy Jr., RFK Jr., sees cryptocurrency as a strong defense against inflation and a way to regain control from the government and banks. He believes crypto can help individuals escape the Federal Reserve's control and fight wealth inequality. Famous singer Akon has asked fans not to ask for crypto messages and personalized videos on Cameo. This comes after his involvement in a futuristic city project in Senegal linked to cryptocurrencies. Gold's price action today is not great either. Now, again, a lot of it has to do with the dollar. So the dollar, when the dollar goes up, since gold is traded in dollars, generally that puts pressure on gold. Now, the dollar being up so much, you could actually make a case that this is okay price action because you're barely down on gold for the day, even though it reversed off of the highs. Again, for me, it's looking at this chart and saying, okay, we, we know this was this huge breakout, right? Huge breakout. I still partially wonder if we need to trickle back down before that next leg up. Doesn't mean we have to retrace to a scene of the crime. I just know that over, over the course of 100 charts, 70% 70, 70 approximately do retrace okay. that back to this level. And if the dollar does break out and continue up, then at some point it pushes gold down. But I think the writing is on the wall is that at some point we either have a recession or inflation and all of these things are positive for gold. And so again, I, you know, any pullbacks towards the scene of the crime for me are buying opportunities. Okay. Gold price, x slash USD continues losing ground and now looks to extend the overnight retracement slide from the record peak. The optimistic outlook for the U.S. economy lifts the U.S. dollar, USD, to a three-week high, which in turn is seen as a key factor undermining the commodity. The Federal Reserve Fed, meanwhile, projected a less restrictive policy stance and pre-interest rate cuts for 2024, lifting bets for an eventual move at the June policy meeting. This is reinforced by a fresh leg down in the U.S. Treasury bond yields, which might have pulled back the U.S.T. bulls from placing aggressive bets and lend support to the non-yielding gold price. Hence, it will be prudent to wait for strong follow-through selling before positioning for any further depreciating move for the XAU/USD.
So what we've seen on the S&P is that we started out strong and then we've kind of gone sideways but faded towards the lower range. Now, again, as you can see, we're a very, very tight range. So it's not like there's a lot going on. It almost reminds me of a hangover. In fact, I feel a little hungover just from the live yesterday, yesterday. and everything <laughs> like that. So I kind of understand the markets today. But again, it's not like it's not like we're continuing to trend higher. If anything, it's kind of sideways to lower which tells me that there's something kind of lurking here, that I'm not really buying yesterday's big rally necessarily in today's update. And the reason I want to talk about this is because of the U.S. dollar. So supposedly the Fed was super dovish yesterday, and they kind of were. He basically, Jerome Powell basically said, the you know we're going to do three rate cuts, and, and, and that's what the markets had priced in. But the kicker is we had the CPI and PPI for two straight months showing inflation, and the Fed still is willing to do three cuts. So that was definitely dovish. And the yeah. kicker is here, yesterday we saw the dollar decline, which is normal. All right, Fed dovish, dollar declines, markets go up. Enough. But look at today, we open lower and the dollar has recovered not only what it lost yesterday, but gained some in addition. And that piques my interest. That's something that says, wait a minute, the big money that's trading currencies, and we'll look at the bond market in just a minute, is not necessarily buying that that the Fed is really going to be cutting rates and just kind of starting this big thing that the market's thinking about. So that's number one. Now, on a technical level, we still have this amazing downsloping trend line here that we want to follow. And again, we look, we zoom out here and we can just see how far this line goes back. It's actually an incredible line here, right? It goes all the way back here through these highs. We tagged it here. So what I'm going to be watching going into tomorrow and the next week is, do we break out? I mean, does the dollar break out, which would be a huge change in character for what from what we've been doing here? So that'll be number one. The second thing that has me kind of skeptical about this market is the bond market, right? So the bond market is known as the smartest money. It's the biggest money. It's trillions and trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars. And today, yesterday, we saw a little downtick in yields. And today we were down decently, but we recovered and we're now flat for the day, trading at 4.277%. We were just, when, when again, we were thinking the Fed was going to be hawkish, we were just slightly higher. So we didn't really, usually if the Fed's dovish, rates should be dropping much, much more, and they're not. And so it again makes me say, hmm, mm. something's going on. What does the yeah. bond market, the big traders, the big institutions know that the stock market's ignoring right now? So that's the thing right there. At the Bitcoin Investor Day in New York, Robert Michnik, BlackRock's digital assets head, shared that Bitcoin is the most popular cryptocurrency among their clients, with Ethereum coming next. IBIT has been consistently growing its Bitcoin holdings since its launch in January. It now holds around 242,830 BTC, worth about $15.8 billion. As of March 22, the fund's Bitcoin holdings have exceeded 243,000. Michnik highlighted that BlackRock's approach to Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies has developed over time. The firm aims to help clients understand market trends, build portfolios, and manage risks. They offer tailored advice to clients at different stages of their crypto investment journey. BlackRock's clients are interested in understanding the risks and potential benefits of investing in Bitcoin. Michnik observed that more investors are choosing IBIT for Bitcoin investments, regardless of their prior experience with the asset. Client discussions often focus on portfolio building and risk management. The strong preference for Bitcoin among BlackRock's clients highlights the growing acceptance of this cryptocurrency as a valid investment. As IBIT continues to grow its Bitcoin holdings, BlackRock is committed to providing clients with thorough insights and advice to navigate the changing crypto market. If you've been with us so far, a big thank you. Don't forget to subscribe for free to Bitcoin Zella for your daily news. The link is waiting below. That's all for today's crypto news. Stick around for more updates, insights, and analysis on cryptocurrencies. Share your thoughts in the comments, like this video, and subscribe for more exciting content.